All right, welcome back everyone. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Uh, we've got two left, so we're coming into the, uh, the finish line pretty soon. Uh, in this session, we will briefly address some of the common struggles we find in the workplace and hopefully, briefly, how to deal with them. And so, um, let me start by sharing with you some of what I have found to be struggles in the workplace, not just through my personal experience, but through my research. Um, I had the privilege of doing my doctoral work in this field, and so part of my doctoral work was doing a lot of research on interviewing people and reading articles about this topic of faith in the workplace, and then specifically, what are some of the uh, struggles and victories people have with being a witness in the workplace. So here are a few points that I found in my research regarding the, the struggles some people have with being a witness in the workplace. All right, number one, faith in the workplace teachings can be overly optimistic. All right, this is a good one. Um, everything I am saying in these sessions, I would think you find inspiring and helpful and hopefully biblically accurate. Uh, but as the old saying goes, right, easier said than done. And so sometimes faith in the workplace teachings, whether it's uh, what I'm teaching here or maybe a book you've read on it or maybe you've gone to a conference on this topic, you know, it, it, it's easier to talk about than to do. So sometimes the faith in the workplace teachings can be overly optimistic compared to the reality of the difficulty of being a Christian witness in the workplace. And that's number one. I admit that. Number two. Uh, group negativity is hard to resist or overcome. All right, you know, maybe you work with people who are just, hate to say it, but constantly negative. Complaining, negative, depressing, uh, complaining, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, that can be hard as a Christian who's supposed to be salt and light. We're supposed to be positive and hopeful. Uh, and friendly and um, having a good outlook on life, it can be hard to be around people that are constantly negative. Uh, it can be hard to resist that, and it can be hard to sometimes overcome that, meaning be a good influence on those people. As, it's, as the old saying goes, sometimes it's easier to be negative than it is positive. So that's number two. Number three, uh, lack of ability to suffer persecution and ridicule. All right, this is one I found to be more and more true, I think, in our culture, uh, depending on where we're going. Uh, you know, it's, it can be um, dicey at times, can it, about religious language or conversations or convictions in your workplace. Uh, and so sometimes we struggle, right? with the ability to suffer persecution and ridicule. Will I be able to handle it? Um, will I get ostracized by my coworkers? Will my clients not purchase from me anymore if they know that I'm a, a evangelical Christian? Well, one encouragement I have for you is that's nothing new under the sun. Uh, the early church struggled with that too. And, uh, the church persevered and still tried to do the next right thing. Uh, and then fourth here, effort to success ratio will be low. All right, what do I mean by that? People are concerned that this, this takes energy. This takes effort to be a Christian witness in the workplace. It takes courage, right? And follow-up and all those points we just talked about in the previous session. Uh, the, people are fearful and concerned that the effort to success ratio will be low. I'm going to try, 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 but it seems like Bill or Susie, they just don't care. It seems like this is not going anywhere. Uh, it seems like I'm putting more effort into it than the fruit that's coming from it. That's understandable. Uh, you know, to be honest, Jesus had the same struggle as well. And so did Paul and the apostles. Keep doing the next right thing, even though the ratio seems to be awkward and off. All right, those are some of the points that I found in my research. How about what some other experts in this field are saying are some of the struggles people have with bringing their faith to the workplace. Uh, number one, complaining. 
That's not being around people who are complaining. That's us as Christians complaining, right? Uh, we all can be that way. You're driving home and you're complaining about the day. Or you're complaining about your boss in front of other people. Um, that is an issue that uh, experts are saying is, is, is a real issue for Christians these days. Uh, number two, submission to authority. Uh, particularly poor authority. Uh, that can be a difficult one. Uh, some of you are good at submitting to authority and some of you struggle with submitting to authority, but we all probably have a hard time submitting to poor authority. Uh, you know, Romans 13 talks about that we're to submit to government and to rulers, um, and even if they're not great, we're still to do the right thing under God's good and gracious hand as Christians and submit to those who are in authority. And the workplace is one of those. But that is a challenge. Uh, number two, I'm sorry, number three, remaining humble in success and competition. Remaining humble in success and competition. Researchers have found that's a difficult one for Christians to deal with today in the workplace. And then the next one, discerning when and when not to talk about spiritual convictions. Okay, so this is that wisdom principle, right? And discernment principle. When do I speak up and when do I not speak up? That is a, a, a continuing challenge and struggle that Christians can have, and I even have it myself, and you probably do too, uh, in your workplace. A few more. How not to bring work home with me. Whoo! That's a whole nother topic, to be honest. Uh, but that's a, a, a challenge that experts are finding, uh, Christians are having in the workplace. How do I leave work at home? And I mean, I leave work at work and not bring it home. Particularly with a cell phone these days. Uh, oftentimes, how often does work follow us home? It sure does. So where's that balance between work and home life? Next, speaking up for ethical breaches. That takes courage, doesn't it? Speaking up for an ethical breach. Um, you see something that a coworker or a boss or a client is asking you to do that you know is unethical. Um, that can be a hard one, especially if company profit or your job or your um, advancement is on the line. Resisting unethical behavior uh, in the workplace. Uh, next one. Proper sense of workplace in my personal identity. All right, so this is a big reason why I've put these video series together. Remember, we talked about before, my identity is primarily in Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't find fulfillment and joy in your work. We work 40% of our waking hours. God cares about your work. But there is a line, isn't there, between finding all my identity and my work and finding my identity in Christ. We've got to make sure we know the line there and not to go over into idolatry to where we're almost worshiping myself and finding my identity in my work versus my identity in being a Christian. And then finally, of course, courage to share the gospel. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun. This is always a real one that we all struggle with. So if you struggle with this, expert research says you're not alone. All right, so here's a few suggestions I've come up with. Suggestions for survival. How do I survive in the workplace? How do I be fruitful in the workplace in the face of difficulty and struggle? Uh, a few big picture points here, all right? So that's the key. These are big picture points. These are not little specific details. These are big picture points to keep in your mind. Number one, remember the big reason why God has you at work. You are there to be a presence of God in this workplace and to be used by God to bring about his will on the earth. Remember the cultural mandate and the image of God? That's the main reason why God has you at work, to do his will and to contribute to his work on earth. Secondly, remember, people are sinners. 
I like to say, don't expect redeemed behavior out of unredeemed people. And that's speaking of non-Christians. Christians too, you and I are, are sinners. And we don't always act and speak and feel and, and, and love the way that we should. Just remember, people are sinners, including you. That should good bring a good perspective on how to deal with and, and, and tolerate and, and, and uh, work along with struggles in the workplace. Uh, next one, remember the Bible calls us to be salt and light. We talked about that previously. Also, the Bible talks about we are ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. We are witnesses of King Jesus. It's worth it and it's an honor. So even though we have a hard time at times being a witness in the workplace, surviving the struggle and the stress of the workplace, being a Christian witness in the workplace, being a Christian in the workplace, it's worth it and it's an honor. Try to remember that perspective. Next, experiment with ways to speak and act as a disciple of Christ that work for you. I love that one. Not, you know, you can't, push a square peg into a round hole. Not everyone is an extrovert. Not everyone is an introvert. Not everyone knows the Bible as much as somebody else. We all learn in different ways. So experiment. Make, make your Christian witness your own. Find ways that work best for you. Don't try to be all things to all people in a way that doesn't feel a fit for you. Find ways that are a fit for you to be a Christian witness in the workplace. Using abilities and gifting God has given you. Um, here's the next one. Think, who's my one or few? What do I mean by that? All right. Particularly speaking here of um, evangelism, but this is true for just pastoral care. There's got to be some person, one person, or maybe a couple. You know them by name. Jill. Mike. Think of my one. Or a few. That I can really work on witnessing to. And caring for. Think about who's my one. Don't just think generally. Oh I go to the workplace and whatever's going to happen today. Think about Mike. Think about Jill. When you go to work each day. And then finally, establish mutual support and counsel with a fellow believer. <laughs> I think we could all agree that's an important one. If you know that there are some other Christians in your department or in your workplace or even maybe your client base or your customers, establish some mutual support and counsel with them. You know, you're a fellow Christian. You're there to support one another. So pray for one another. Be able to um, work through life together. Uh, in Not just in church, but fellow Christians in the workplace. That's a valuable one in helping you survive and thrive in the workplace. All right, let me uh, close this session by giving one little bit of bonus material. I was thinking about religious expression in the workplace. You're probably wondering about that, right? That's a big topic. Um, what is right and wrong in terms of where those lines are of religious expression in the workplace? So I've thought through this, done some research. Let me read to you my four thoughts on how you should do that or deal with religious expression in the workplace. Um, let me just read these for us. Number one, be aware of and sensitive to the human resource policies of your workplace. If open to various kinds of religious expression, great. If closed to various kinds of religious expression, then obey and discuss spiritual matters privately. This is not cowardly. It honors your boss and God. It may also open up better opportunities for witness due to you being respectful for company policies. So that's my first one. Second one, no matter what the policy is at your workplace on religious expression, Keep evangelism to non-believers and your personal ministry to fellow believers to be primarily 
at lunch break and before or after work. We don't want to be wasting company time because you're having personal discussions with people in the workplace. There may be a place for it here and there, but that's why I say primarily. Keep your evangelism to non-believers and your personal ministry to fellow believers to be primarily at lunch break and also before or after work. All right, number three. Your Christian attitudes and ethics displayed in the workplace are actually powerful examples of Christian religious expression and Christian witness today. Don't count that out. You don't always have to be saying spiritual things to be having a spiritual influence. Your Christian ethics and attitudes displayed in the workplace are powerful examples of Christian religious expression even before you say a word. That is true. And then final one, listen to this. In the early church, a sizable portion of evangelistic opportunities came when non-believers, quote, asked for a reason for the hope within believers in workplaces and marketplaces. All right? That is a big way in which evangelism happened through marketplaces and workplaces, people would ask Christians for a reason for the hope within. Let them open the door to the opportunity, not always you trying to force the door open. I say this as a healthy balancing point to the dominant or assumed method of believer-initiated evangelism today. That's I think, is an important way to deal with religious expression in the workplace, each four of those points. I hope those are helpful for you. And so this ends our session now, and I look forward to the next session we'll have, which I believe is our final session. Thank you.